Cass here from Gilfoy Studios. Today I have another tutorial for you guys. But unfortunately, a lot of uh, my data was corrupted and there's a lot of clips that I just don't have from this build. Uh, so it's going to be an advanced uh, build for that reason alone because you kind of have to know what you're doing to be able to bridge the gaps between what you see in the video and the parts that are kind of skipped over because I just don't have the files anymore. This is not a helmet that I intend to replicate and I was going to put a full tutorial together but unfortunately, um, you know, stuff happens. Um, so basically I'm going to show you guys how to build this helmet from scratch. Uh, you can either buy the patterns or the, uh, the laser cut foam kit from my Etsy store. I go over probably about 90% of the steps um, on how to make this. So you can still kind of, you know, get to this result. I do have a lot of detailed pieces that were added to this that are not gonna be part of the kit and that I don't really go over except in like super fast forward. Uh, so it's really gonna be up to you the level of detail that you put into this helmet because the DIY kit and even the uh, patterns really are just kind of basic pieces that come with everything. Uh, it starts pretty abruptly into shaping the foam, but if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that you gotta heat your foam first and bend it into shape to make a helmet. There are plenty of other videos that exist on how to put a basic helmet together. This will take you to the steps where the helmet is finished, but unpainted. The paint job is fairly straightforward as far as like these parts back here being green and everything else just kind of being like dark metallics and, and silver highlights and stuff like that. Uh, little pieces like these tubes and stuff like that coming in and out. I have a little fan going on mine. Um, those are all details that you can add on later. I have links in the description on where to purchase a lot of the stuff that I use for the build and where you can get some magnets. I have a lot of magnets going so that I can remove the visor and place it different in different spots so I can eat, maybe breathe a little bit more if I need. And of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Uh, I'll try to answer them as much as possible uh, to kind of help you guys if you're kind of stuck in anything uh, to the best of my capabilities. All right, let's get into it. So once you have all of your pieces foam formed, now I'm gonna put everything together with the barge and I'm gonna fast forward through this process. Now right. uh, this Pretty much this half is put together. We're gonna to do the same, put the other half together, and then we're gonna put everything together in the middle. All right, let's fast forward to that. What I'm doing here is once I've glued it, I reverse the direction of it and put the pressure on the seam that I want to glue so that it sits as flush as possible. So that's basically, You're welcome. That's basically what it is that I'm doing right now. And once you're done with that, you pop it out the other way, and then you'll end up with a smoother finish on your seam. Now we have our two pieces done. I'm gonna put this together, only on the, uh, the top, not the front, from front to back. And we're gonna keep it moving. Next, you're gonna grab these pieces, these two long ones, these two short ones, and this big long one, and we're gonna place them, the big one, down in the middle first. Now you're gonna try and you know do some measurements and make sure that it's nice and centered all the way, going from front to back, um, because this is really gonna be the foundation of how far 
these are away from this and it's going to determine the spacing of it also so do make sure that it is centered all the way what i would do is grab a ruler and figure out the uh, middle of this to the middle of that and then trace a straight line right down the center of that and then try to visually align this center line with your seam in the middle all the way until it touches on the back all right so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that and meet you guys at the next step all right so once you've got this all right my lines are pretty pretty even on uh, the left and right of the seam right now uh, so what i'm going to go ahead and do is put glue down here i'm also going to heat this and um, form it ever so slightly so it has a bit of a curve to it so that it fits right onto the uh, this top piece right here so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this process and we'll see you guys at the next step So now that you got this part down, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this piece for the front. I'm gonna put it, this is really gonna depend on you. Um, and the comic, or not the comic, but in the movie, it's really, really close to this piece. I'm gonna give it a really, really slight gap when I put this on, just to give it a little bit more dimensionality. I'm gonna wrap that all the way around. Uh, to go back towards the back. So the same thing that I did earlier with this where I taped it and then I traced it Just so I know where it is that I'm laying it down I'm gonna do that right now uh, Once I figure out uh, the gap that I want here, and then I'm gonna do all the rest of the pieces So literally these go as far or as close as you'd like to make them. Uh, I would leave about like two millimeter gap in between them I think is I uh, would work just fine. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process and see you guys at the next step. So on this piece, the one that goes next to this thinner one, uh, again, just try and visualize, see how I left just the ever so slight gaps, like two millimeters in between it. And then when you put this down, you're gonna do, try to do the exact same gap. What you'll notice is this piece kind of comes up short in the back. So when you heat it up, uh, just pull it and lengthen it a little bit. That way, uh, by the time it gets here, it just lands flush with this line here. So this extends past and this lands flush right here. So if you want a visual representation of this line that just extends and goes over so this piece should finish right here right and you can achieve that by um, just pulling it a little bit after you've heated it up so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process put it down and meet you guys at the next step so as you can see it starts from the beginning goes all the way to the back and ends right at that line all right and so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing I've done so far on the other side and see you guys for the next step. All right, now we're gonna assemble <clears throat> these sections right here, which basically is going to correspond to this big part right here that's going to be removable so this obviously is this part this is the little detail that goes on top of here we also have these two parts that are the bottom chin area right um, you can if you'd like add some beveled details to your part that's completely up to you it's uh, aesthetic as the at this point but what you really want to do is um, we're going to cut the edges of these at a 45 degree angle. And by that, I mean you're gonna grab an X-Acto knife 
right? Or if you have a machine, a bandsaw or something, you can do that with, with that. Um, uh, so what you want to do is basically you just put your blade at an angle right up against the line, slice all the way through, and then you end up with like this angled edge. And when these two angle edges meet each other, they're gonna come um, looking exactly like this and have like a nice <clears throat> uh, edge to it. I've said edge like 26 times right now. But yeah, that's pretty much what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do that to these two surfaces, right? Remember the angles need to be opposite each other so that when they uh, converge, they have a protruding angle to them. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to move over to the machine. If you don't have a machine, Exacto knife works just as well. And then we're going to put these parts together. So, as you can see, you guys can tell I have my angles here, right? But the angles are facing opposite each other. That way, when we put this together, we have a nice edge piece. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this and get to the build part. Alright, so now my two parts are cut out. I decided to go with a little bevel on the outside of my piece. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. So basically, I'm recreating this exact same look. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and barge the two sides, glue them together. Same thing for these two. Barge the two sides, glue them together. And then we're going to glue these two pieces to each other. All right, so once you get to this point, this is, everything looks good. This is one of those situations where you're gonna have to look at yourself in the mirror a lot because basically uh, you're gonna wanna tape this and not make it permanent just yet because it's, it really depends on you know the shape of your face, how tall or how low you're going to put this inside of the chin piece. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my own measurements and once I figure it out we'll come back and talk about what was done all right so basically what I ended up doing is putting the helmet on my head and closing this area off like that, making sure that everything is flush and then once this was figured out I put this on and saw how deep it needed to go into the jaw, right? And then I held these two pieces together while I was holding the helmet, turned it around, and this was the result. So this is how far I needed to put mines in. So if you look at the side here, it's about, I'd say like a quarter inch past this line. Uh, for you, it might be a little higher. For someone else, it might be a lot lower. So just test it out, and once you figured it out, you're going to glue this into place. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these parts together. Catch you guys at the next step. All right, so with this part assembled, we're going to go ahead and put this aside for now, and we're going to work on the ear cups or ear vents. And you should have all these pieces. Right. and these are all going to make up the ear cup. Now you'll notice that um, what I've done on some of these, I've gone ahead and beveled the edges, and I'm gonna glue it on top of a non-beveled edge piece. Now what that does is it's gonna give me a little bit more uh, thickness so that it kind of protrudes off to the side just like the helmet does in the picture. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these. There is a little bit of a vent that's inside here, something similar to, let me draw it for you guys real quick. Um, so it's gonna look something like this, right? Uh, so what you can do is go ahead and cut that out of this first one, or you can cut it out of the entire piece. Again, this is aesthetics, it really depends on you uh, how much of this you want. This would actually be 
Um, this one would actually be pretty cool because what that's going to allow you to have is uh, a little bit of air coming into the helmet and also it'll allow you to hear a little better because your ears won't be completely sealed. Uh, but up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these pieces together and I'll catch you guys for the next step. Alright, as I got these parts assembled, I'm going to go ahead and attach these to it. Now, you can definitely attach these as is. Uh, I'm going to round these edges off a, a bit to give it a little bit more like realism and like aerodynamics. You don't really see like a lot of angles, it's a lot of swooping curves. So I'm going to uh, bevel this to its edge. I'm going to clean these edges up a little bit and probably put in uh, these holes that I was talking about earlier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. Focus. All right, so yeah, it's kind of like ugly. It doesn't really match up all too well, but look at this, it's just nice and smooth. And instead of having these rough angles, I have like a nice smooth transition from one edge to another. That's basically what I'm doing. You can do this with sandpaper, you can do it with a Dremel, I just happen to have uh, this tool to do it, so I'm gonna keep at it. All right, so see how smooth this piece is as opposed to this, this angular one? I basically beveled this right off to the edge and made it fall off the edge. It gives us a nicer look and it goes a lot better when we put it on top of this one, which just looks like a face plate. All right, let's keep got it. All right, now that I got everything all smoothed out, I'm going ahead and trace my little detail piece. This is up to you how big, small, thin, or if you even use it at all. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a fresh X-Acto blade and cut this out and use this piece to transfer it over to the other side so I can have um, symmetrical parts, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process. Catch you guys for the next step. Alright, I've made my vent holes, but obviously they're not very clean. Let me focus. Obviously they're not very clean, because I did it with the X-Acto, but I can go ahead and with a Dremel clean those out. So I'm going to do that and catch you guys on the next step. Alright, clean up my edges a little bit. It's a little bit cleaner. I'll probably end up putting a mesh behind this or something so you can't see uh, directly through the helmet. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is put the plates on top, and then we're going to glue them directly to the helmet. Alright. Alright, your cups are installed. I'm gonna add some more details. This little thing starts right here, goes around, towards the back, and ends right there. I'm gonna go ahead and install that right now. See it? No, nope, see it? There we go. Yep, like that. Alright, on both sides. Once you have these installed, what you notice is I have the marks of where the mask lands. So this is just one of those situations where you're going to put this on your face. It's really difficult to do this yourself. Uh, it's better if you have a friend helping you out. You're going to hold it to your face where everything lines up and you're going to have someone trace those marks for you. That way, when you don't have it on, you know exactly where everything is supposed to be. So right now, what I'm gonna do is just kind of fake attach it for now with a couple of pieces of tape. All 
After you're done putting the details, you can go ahead and start uh, figuring out how you're going to do your face shell mines. I have magnets connecting everything together. Right now they're a little weak. I'm probably going to change them up and get some, strong, some, some stronger magnets. But basically what I did is uh, inserted some magnets in here and then went back into the face with my lines, pressed them into place to make an impression so I knew where the corresponding uh, magnets were and I just drilled holes with dremels and glued them in with some uh, super glue gorilla but these magnets that I'm using they're a little thin so I'm gonna go ahead and swap them out for larger magnets so I can get better adhesion to everything all right so I'm gonna fast forward through that process As you can see, there are a bunch of magnets here. And to be perfectly honest, I just didn't feel like dealing with taking out the, uh, the small thin ones um, after I put them all in, because it took so much time. Uh, but this large one and this large one literally are more than enough to keep it um, on my face nice and snug. All right, the other ones are just, I don't know, at this point they're just there for decoration. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you can get two strong magnets, one in the area of the beak and one in the area of the jaw, you should be all set. So that's how I have mine mounted. Uh, you can possibly do something similar with Velcro or uh, even glue completely uh, this to one side and then just leave it open on the other so you can wear the helmet. Um, all right, let's move on to the next couple steps. All right, so with everything pretty much all set, we're almost done with all of our parts. Um, the only things we have are these parts here that go in the back. Now, do you remember that uh, the spacing between these pieces is completely up to you? So in my case, I put them close enough to each other that this piece doesn't fit anymore. And what I did is I just kind of measured out how much of this I need to take out so that it can actually sit there flush. And once I have this installed, I'm gonna grab this piece, put it right there, and just wrap it around underneath right there. So that'll be that. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that step. All right, and that's pretty much it for the helmet at this point, as far as the parts that we need to put onto it. Uh, these you can put on here as like the details for the vents. Um, again, you decide where these go because depending on what visor you use for your helmet, you might need to put this lower, this way, um, however you feel like it. And if you are really feeling adventurous, you can even uh, trace this hole out and make it so that it just kind of plunges into there. Um, uh, now let's get into some electronics and I'll show you guys how to do the lights. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do for the lights, I grab two pieces of uh, five millimeter foam and I made them, uh, you know, the same size. And what I'm gonna do is uh, connect them into a circle and then I'm gonna put a green film there and I'm gonna put the light behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the construction of uh, just this and the green film and I'll show you guys the electronics in a bit. So now with these done, what you're gonna do is try it out on your head and figure out where you wanna place these because your eyes should be above this thing. I mean, depending on how big you make these. This, so this is about, about an inch and a half um, that I made these in diameter. And my eyes just end up being like right there. So I can see right past it. Okay, and for me, where it was more comfortable for me, um, if you look at this detail that I have here, I also realized that I didn't cover this. My camera had died when I did this stuff, but this is just extra detail that you guys can have, uh, can add. Of course, the, the parts that you get are very basic. Um, to basically 
make the helmet just bare bones. There's a lot of other details that go into it that you can add if you'd like to, but this usually gets you there. Uh, in any case, so these end up fitting right here on this part right there. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just gluing this onto the uh, helmet part. So not the beak, the helmet part. So that when I take the beak off, the lights still stay on the helmet and I don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue those parts there. And then as far as the lights are concerned, it could be as easy as grabbing a set of uh, fairy lights from Amazon, uh, maybe cutting it to size, uh, or maybe even using one and, and spreading it and splitting it to go into both of them. And then you have, you know, let there be light, you have light. I'm gonna do a single LED on each. So I'm gonna have a, a battery pack very similar to this, but I'm just gonna solder a single LED on one end. And I'm gonna run the wires to go into the ear puck, right? Which is pretty much what I've done here. There's a single LED in each one of the, uh, uh, the eye bulbs. And I have my switches coming out from underneath and the vent so I can easily access without having to um, open the helmet, right? So that's basically it. So you can use something like this, or if you have the means to, you can solder some LEDs together. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process and um, catch you guys at the next step. These are installed. Once you take your face mask off, you don't have to worry about it. Everything stays there and your wires are gonna stay intact. All right. Uh, this is also definitely something that you can do at um, last. You don't have to do this at this point particularly because um, it's gonna be a pain when you're painting. You're gonna have to mask this um, and all that stuff. So that can definitely be uh, one of the last things that you do is your electronics really after everything is painted. I'm gonna go ahead and add a lot more details to this and speed through it. Um, there's a lot of little trinkets, little parts that he has going on um, that the, uh, the kit doesn't come with. Again, it comes with just the, uh, the base of everything. All of this extra detail stuff, it's up to you um, how much work you wanna put into it, all right?
if you've made it this far, congratulations, guys. You just completed your Vulture Helmet. Again, apologies for not being able to have uh, a lot of the video. That kind of couldn't be helped, but I still wanted to put this tutorial together. And I hope the annotations during the time lapse kind of helped a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is Cass from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.